I just want to start this off by saying this is very preliminary. It's still unfolding. People are still doing analysis on this. And there's just a lot of mixed questions. So we might get some things wrong, but we're going to try to really what we do know and what we don't know as best we can. Um, and with that, I just quickly read through this blog article that's linked on our forum. Jonah's done a little bit more than me. So I'm going to ask Jonah some questions kind of with some of the context of what I know. So I'm going to pry. I haven't talked to Jonah about this yet. So I'm also trying to learn here along with everybody else. So this was posted, I guess, by Red Hat. Did Red Hat discover this or did someone? Uh, no, this was discovered on the open wall um, firewall like mailing list, I believe is where it was originally reported. And then they also reported it to Red Hat. And Red Hat is the organization that assigned like the CVE number and kind of handled the disclosure from there. Um, but it was it. originally posted to this mailing list. Got it. And so my first thought when I saw this was, oh, it's security alert for those using Fedora and Fedora Rawhide and all these different uh, variations. And so my first thought is, oh, it's a security issue with Fedora users. But very quickly reading into it, it actually has nothing directly to do with Fedora. It seems to be a library that Fedora utilizes along with many other Linux distributions that was actually impacted. So what is that library? What does it do? And who likely uses that library? And who actually installed the malicious version of the library? Yeah, so um, the library is called XZ, and it's basically a compression library. So programs can use um, another library that calls XZ in order to compress data, basically. And it's very widely used in the Linux space. A lot of different projects use it. Um, originally, when this vulnerability was reported, they thought it was actually Debian specific, um, because that was where they originally encountered the issue. Um, but then it turned out to be it turned out to affect a lot of different uh, distributions as well, which is why it also got reported to Red Hat Security and all these other people. And now a lot of people are investigating it. The main vulnerability that was found with this um, was a backdoor into SSH. And the way that it worked is this XZ library isn't used by SSH directly, um, which means that the SSH maintainers probably never would have, uh, they never would have been on their radar. But um, on some systems like Debian and Fedora, for example, they patch SSH to give it compatibility with system D. And then that uh, service that they're hooking into system D with uses XZ. So it's kind of this chain where um, if you have this installed and you have SSH installed, um, you're actually not impacted with the SSH vulnerability specifically. Um, so for example, Arch Linux also had the compromised version of this in their package manager, but SSH on Arch Linux wasn't backdoored because they don't do the patch for systemd support in SSH that Debian and Fedora do, for example, just to give you an idea. But this was a backdoor that was added to the release of XC by the maintainer of XC, and it had made it into pretty much all package managers um, across the board. So if you used a rolling release distro um, like Arch, like Open SUSC, Tumbleweed, um, any of those other distros that get package updates immediately, it was pretty much already on the systems. It was actually even pushed to other non-Linux distros like macOS, for example, if you use Homebrew, um, XZ, the compromised version was pushed there. The back door seems to be Linux specific, so I don't think that a lot of people have to worry about it, but it's it, it was out there pretty much. And the only thing that was kind of preventing it from being widespread was that all of these distros like Debian and Fedora and Ubuntu have like static releases where they don't update until the next version, right? So if you were on the current Fedora 39, you didn't have the compromised version of XC, so you wouldn't be impacted. But the Fedora 40 beta came out, I think, four days ago. And so if you were on that beta, you would be affected. And then, if, of course, if you're on Fedora Rawhide, with, which is the rolling release version, you'd be impacted. And yeah, it, it was pretty much in all of the rolling releases. It was in all of the betas, and it would have been on all of the Linux systems within a matter of weeks or months, most likely, if it, if it hadn't been caught, which is pretty crazy. Right. And I saw some people on Mastodon talking about this, and it looked like it was stumbled on very accidentally. Like someone yeah. was just troubleshooting an issue that they were having, and they dug a little bit more into it to figure out what was happening. And they were like, this seems a little weird. And then they dug into it more and they started discovering this. It wasn't even a security researcher, as far as I know. Um, is that the, was that what happened? Yeah. 
Yeah, the original report to the Open Wealth Forum was made by, I think he's a Postgres developer at Microsoft, maybe? Don't quote me on that. But he works with databases, basically. And he was investigating why there was lower performance on these updated systems with the databases and stuff. And he traced it down to basically SSH, for some reason, was using a lot of CPU time, even though like it was denying requests. So usually like you'd see some CPU usage if you log into SSH and use it. But even when SSH like denied a request to log in from like an unauthorized person, which is just supposed to cut it off and then obviously not keep running, it was still calling this backdoor in the background that apparently wasn't very well coded. And so it was using a lot of resources basically. And that's how digging into the source code, it was discovered. But he was pretty much just benchmarking the performance of a completely unrelated program on Linux and thus happened to stumble into it. It was just kind of a lot of coincidences that got set up into finding this. It wasn't really found by anyone in the security space at all. Right. And then before I kind of like go into like the, the takeaways for this, I think I had the question too of what, like, let's say this was rolled out to all Linux users. What would the impact, what, what would the impact have, have been? Um, what does that mean? Like someone could SSH into their computer and do whatever they wanted. Does it mean if they only used SSH, the SSH tunnel would be comp like, like what would have been the, the repercussions for an average end user if this actually rolled out? Pretty much what happened is when SSH was run, it ran some code in the background in the pre-authorization stage of this SSH connection. So it could, it would, it started running before you even authenticated or anything, basically you can any random person could have connected with SSH, no matter if they have credentials, and then this code would have executed. And that would have either potentially let them authenticate into SSH anyways, if they sent some data, or it would have allowed them most likely to execute some remote code on the machine. Either way, it seems to be pretty much a situation where this would have allowed an attacker to execute anything on the machine that they'd like, basically. Wow, that's pretty So insane. it would not have been great, and <laughs> it would good. have been... <laughs> <laughs> pretty much installed everywhere if it wasn't for this being caught. Yeah, pretty crazy. Um, I'm really curious for your takes because my first reaction when I saw this was, this is why we always say open source isn't everything. I, I went into it a little bit more pessimistic. I was like, yeah, this is like, who actually verifies the code of what they run? Like, like, please, someone in the comments, tell me you actually went through and inspected all the code of all the open source software you use and that you have the expertise to do that. I know I don't. Maybe I can go through and see if there's anything obviously ridiculous, but I would never have caught something like this. And I doubt many people would have ever caught that. Even security researchers didn't catch it. Someone stumbled onto it by accident. So I think that you know, you, we can't be too complacent with open source software because there is always this risk. And for all we know, there's actually five other backdoors like this in Linux that we just don't know about, for all we know. Again, I'm not saying there is. There's no evidence for that. I'm just saying, like, theoretically, like, who is actually, like, verifying this? And there are people who do try to go through and verify this, and those are the security researchers. But I'm just saying that, like, it's not a foolproof system because this actually did slip up and ended up on people's computers. Granted, not public releases for many things, but this is a pretty big deal. But then mm -hmm. I started reading more of the optimistic side of things, which is if it weren't for the open source nature of this, this would have this easily snuck in and been there till the end of time. And I saw some people on Mastodon talking about how, yeah, it was kind of lucky. We just caught this very, very luckily. But I don't know, like, what are your stances on this? Because I think, yeah, it's overall always a win in my eyes for something to be open source if it can be, but it's never a guarantee that that's going to be more private, more secure, um, and sometimes even more transparent if depending on the context of the open source software, I guess. So curious for your thoughts. Yeah, it's absolutely, I mean, not a guarantee and this kind of proves it. Uh, one of the most interesting events that happened in this whole saga is that the maintainer of this XZ library for the past two years, I think their GitHub username was like Gia T something, some numbers. Um, they submitted a pull request to um, a Google project that checks for security issues and a bunch of other open source projects um basically saying like disable this check on this project because it's incompatible with the project or something and google maintainers um merged that pr this was a long time ago it was merged and that check was is actually what would have caught the back door so in this case the maintainer um literally disabled the checks that would have caught this but at google's side of things does, anyway does anyone know who this person um, is the maintainer 
No, not as far as I know. Um, people have looked into it. No social media presence or anything. Um, to be honest with you, I, it's pretty rare that I would like really attribute this to like state actors in my mind. But in this case, it, it really seems like the most plausible explanation. Because if you think about like what kind of threat actors would maybe be interested in adding a backdoor like this and doing it in the way that this happened, it really doesn't line up for it to be anyone else because we're talking about an open source maintainer who had been maintaining the XZ library or the XZ program for two years now, I believe. And presumably to become a maintainer, they had probably been making plenty of contributions before that. Um, and so it's a very long term play right. basically to become a very trusted maintainer and then eventually add this back door, which <laughs> <laughs> in all likelihood never would have been caught. It was clearly a very long-term and sophisticated play that if you're thinking about like malware developers, for example, you that's not something that you're going to do just to run some ransomware on people's computers, for example. It's not something that <laughs> really anybody else has a motivation to do. And so when you think about it like that, I definitely take the more optimistic view, which is that the only reason that we found this ahead of time is because all of these projects were open source. I think that this could have just as easily happened to a closed source project. And in that case, we would not have found this backdoor until it had already been on office systems and it had already, you know, been a widespread catastrophe, basically. And we just narrowly avoided a catastrophe in this case. But right. if you think about like the kind of software developer, possibly some agent of a nation state intelligence agency who wants to add a backdoor into programs that connect to SSH in a very sophisticated way like this. If they wanted to do the same sort of attack on a system like Windows or Mac OS, <laughs> and you're gonna be spending over two years dedicated to doing this, um, that's something that you could, I mean, you can get hired as a software developer at Microsoft or Apple <laughs> in two years and become a trusted employee at that time and do this kind of stuff in in releases of closed source software. Closed source software is not immune to rogue developers or maintainers it's... adding things into it that the company might not know about. And without being able to externally check this kind of thing, like what happened here, I really don't think it would have been caught until it was already in a release with this kind of software is what I really think. Right, great points. And I think also it doesn't have to be like they have to act like they're an engineer for Google for two years. It's, it's as simple as just bribing the employee. <laughs> yeah, it could be that it's as well. As simple as bribing an employee. <laughs> there's there's a lot of vectors where yeah. uh, like a well-resourced adversary could add stuff like this to to any program. It doesn't, it's not specific to open source. And it's right. certainly not a situation like the University of Minnesota situation with Linux, for example, where some people were leaving drive-by commits that were caught and fixed, but uh, in this case, it was like the maintainer themselves that was adding all these backdoors after they had gained a long period of trust. I really think that like the amount of time and dedication to making this backdoor, which was very sophisticated and very well hidden and almost certainly wouldn't have been caught if it wasn't for what was pretty much a crazy set of situations and coincidences that led to um, it being found. Right. Super interesting. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. Well, um... Like I said at the beginning, this is still very much unfolding. We There's still a lot we don't know. So um, on our forum, discuss.techler.tech, um, if we don't do a dedicated video on this, which I don't know if we will, given we're, we just talked about it right now, um, that's the place to stay updated on it because I'm sure there's going to be more updates there. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. Here's another clip for you. And if you want to really dive into tech, check out our main channel, TechLore, for a deeper dive into digital rights, privacy, security, and more. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.